Who starts? Me? You? How are we going to do this? Who talks first? I talk first, you talk first. The good cop, bad cop routine. <laughs> So guys, we just watched a series that just got better and better and better with each episode. Oh yeah. And not only better with each episode, the first episode hooked you already, hooked me mm. and hooked everybody. Uh, that show is The Penguin, yep. a spinoff to Matt Reeves's The Batman and his current uh timeline that he's doing as far as batman stories um and yeah it's it starred colin farrell as oswald cobblepot or oswald Cobb. Cobb. we'll get to that um as the penguin and his rise to power because at, at the very end of the batman you see him looking at the city mm. now destroyed and he's loving everything it's like we and it just opens up more possibilities mm -hmm. um but with, with this show you're able to you also have other characters that pop up some of them are pretty big um and yeah it was just incredible i mean yeah. what's, what's your thoughts um yeah we watched the first two yeah. episodes we were on a shoot uh feels like forever ago but it was literally probably just less than two months ago oh yeah um because we we're super excited to see it um but didn't expect it to be this good no. um i have always loved dc i will always love dc more than marvel and i know you're the same yeah um sam's almost there <laughs> <laughs> um maybe he is i don't know but uh not after the dc uh, some great stuff in there though <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. but that is just a fact and i already love the batman and so having the penguin come out it was like obvious that i was going to watch it mm -hmm. and then we watched it and the first episode like you said blew both of us away we immediately watched the second one and that one blew us away even more yeah and then we had to do week by week ever since then mm -hmm. which has been one of the best experiences of week to week show i've ever had dude i've i look forward to sunday nights yeah and it's, now it's over and, and now it's over damn <laughs> <laughs> down to the next yes but um no I, I actually enjoyed it especially when i forget when i would forget oh I mean, yeah so then by like six o'clock i remember holy crap in like a couple hours <laughs> the penguin show is coming and I'm, i was looking i'm looking forward to it and i get ready to go with my snacks and my yeah. drinks and i'm ready to watch it and i do it and i enjoyed it <laughs> oh, it feels like a freaking event like the it closest does. thing you can get to being like oh this movie's out in theater i haven't felt that it was mainly a show i haven't felt that in a while we just want to just keep, yeah. keep freaking going yeah um because there are shows that are even while good, you gotta take some minute to process and mm. whatnot. But this, I just want to just ba -da -ba -ba -ra. let's just keep going. I yeah. love this. Um, but uh, yeah, um, it's like so much stuff. There is it. so much stuff. It, it, it's what's great is that they're trying to keep it in that grounded universe that Matt Reeves, uh, the Batman, uh, created. Um, so it's very much that. Um, but it's this pseudo gangster godfather sopranos like all good fellas like all this type of gangster uh, if you call it cliche or not um this type of gangster rising the power almost like scarface mm -hmm. type of type of feel with with oz um and i love that because it just yeah. it adds this gangster feel that is more un more underground too you see the highs yeah. you see the lows you know whenever you watch controversial i guess but whenever you watch some of some some gangster flicks it's you know people that are up there you know mm -hmm. or have that all oh, this and that and you yeah. have one you have a guy you have a character that wants to be that and is around that but he is not that dude it's so incredibly Until, well done yeah oh, it's, it's yeah. yeah start the start of the show i guess we could try and go in like order of events yeah. Yeah. type thing because that's how we obviously experienced it but that's like the best way I can think of that we can both remember everything that happens. There's so much stuff that happens in this eight, eight limited series episode pack that we got. Mm -hmm. That was like Christmas in the middle of 
fall. No, okay, what's funny is it's, the, the ending is... Dude, uh, yeah, because it's leading straight into the... Oh, man, Which dude. confirmed, I guess, that the Batman 2 will be taking place during Christmas. Yep. I have theories on that. I There's think so it's... That, that has me, that has me like, Mr. Freeze, possibly, yeah. but I don't know if that... I think that's too obvious. I think that this might be... Could be a long Halloween mixed with... Um, Oh, what's the other one? Oh, I had it in my mind. Halloween mixed with... Ah, I forgot. But it the was... comic? Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. some type of... It was great. Um, But like this this could be that type of thing. Now, now you know, Long Halloween could make sense. Cause maybe, maybe, maybe the Batman 2 goes into a different uh, telling or like a different portion from the Batman. And then goes into present day. Um, you could do that with Long Halloween. Then you have the whole year, the killings and whatnot, all the way till Christmas mm-hmm. and whatnot. Penguin and Riddler have a feud. Granted, they seem to be friends immediately, but in the Long Halloween, that's one of the biggest things is Riddler and Penguin are out to kill each other. And there's also Two Face in there too, right? Two Face, and that's a yeah. Two Face origin story as well. Yep. I've only seen part one. Of yeah. The animated movie. Oh, I really wanted right. to see two, you but didn't see it. I love oh. part one. Part two is great, man. I gotta watch that. It um, felt it felt like it didn't. It's not the same, but it, it brought me back to the Dark Knight Returns part yeah, one and two. Absolutely. Like, the end. Of the part two. There's a section that is very much fr- from the Batman. Well, the Batman got inspiration for the Long Halloween. Oh, okay. With the, with the certain with with Car- Falcone and Selina. Mm-hmm. This whole that whole portion literally feels like it's from the Batman. So, um, Batman took place on Halloween. Yeah, they did. It's like it had awesome. to draw from that. But oh yeah, um, yeah. I mean, Mister Freeze has always been a rumor. I don't just don't. I don't know. I don't feel confident because he said they're not trying to go super fantastical. But yeah. then Clayface has been in the mix. True. Which is like True. I feel like Clayface and Freeze are the same level of yeah. fantastical. It's like, it's like, come on, man. Just, I mean, be, you could be grounded. I'm fine with that. But could, like, yeah, why yeah. are we just going to keep the Riddler, Two-Face, Joker? Come on. Yeah, like, I, 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 they have to do Hush. Yeah. And they have to do the Court of Owls with the way the Batman starts. Sure. Because, sure. I don't know. Like, I mean, especially with the Penguin, too. Like, you don't see much of what's happening around Gotham besides what's focused on Penguin. But, yeah. like that's a huge part of gotham is the mob which yeah. you're dealing with the falcones the Maronis, yeah and oz Finally, yeah. and with what happens in the show it's like he became the kingpin yeah pretty much and it's insane yeah i mean <laughs> pretty much like 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 with the, without you know without spoiling too much or or, or you know script like, but yeah, like i don't know but like the like biggest thing that shocked us was you know, it's it starts off with Penguin trying, you know, about to probably make some moves or whatever, right? And out of nowhere comes Alberto Falcone, mm-hmm. which is Falcone's son. And he quickly changes the script or whatever, and he's like, "Oh yeah, I know. I'm just giving this for you or whatever." And then he start they start having a drink, they start talking about things, and you see this up and down thing of Alberto loving Oz's company, but yeah. is very much like, "You're also beneath me." Yeah. Like, what are you doing? This is my stuff and all this and whatnot. And straight up, Penguin just caps. Bro, kills that absolutely first really. six like, minutes of the show, that's what immediately oh, captivates an audience. Yeah, like, that was like, yo, what are we in for now? Because that's going to have repercussions. And yeah. boy, it had repercussions all the way to episode eight. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and then from then on, it's, it's Oz trying to build an empire or like build something with this new drug. Mm-hmm. Um, and what's crazy is um you know sophia falcone comes out of arkham which is falcone's daughter uh accused of being the hangman and uh trying to clear her name but also wanting to figure out why the hell is my brother dead yeah and oz playing both sides too uh with with falcone <laughs> yeah, but also maroni because salvatore Mar- everyone yeah salvatore maroni makes an appearance in this film i mean film the show it feels like by, it does played by clancy brown <laughs> the which is awesome <laughs> freaking mr krabs or yeah. lex luther himself from the animated super yeah, i feel series. like you could say or everyone or everyone yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like he's in the flash he's in <laughs> Yes, he is. He could have been in the Flash movie. I wouldn't remember. Yeah, but uh, yeah. So then you have you have then uh, Oz trying to dodge 
dodge and weave and be on both Moroni, uh, Moroni and Falcone's side, but also trying to do his own thing. So there's double crosses mm -hmm. in, in this show, and it's 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 incredible. Um, how about the relationship between uh, uh, Oz and Victor? Bro. Like, dude, the relationships in this show are yeah almost unmatched in yeah. my opinion like it's ridiculous how you could have oz and victor you could have oz and his mom oz and sophia as odd as they are together mm -hmm. they do have a crazy relationship then sophia with any of her family like a big family but mainly the dude i forgot the actor's name but um the doctor the, the doctor too but oh. the the one in the the one who survives her slaying everyone oh true yeah bald dude Gia. oh no yeah. oh, oh, no 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 uh jo johnny vd yes johnny vd yeah, yeah. oh, he's an gosh. awesome character yeah. and talk about being capped as well i know like it's just there's so spoilers. Yeah. yeah like there <laughs> there's gonna be spoilers for sure uh yeah. but there's in every single episode they find a way to do something that you didn't necessarily expect but it also works with everything that's happening around them. Yeah. And like the craziness, like we all, the boys is like shock value galore, which is still well done. This is not nowhere near as intense, but like, right. it's got that same thing where it's like, There's whoa, stakes. that just happened. That just means they have to deal with everything else that's about to happen too. There's stakes in this show for sure. And you know, it's, it's just, it's honestly intense every episode. Mm -hmm. Um, but when there's time to develop the characters, it's great because they all feel real. Mm -hmm. The relationship between Oz and his mom, the relationship between him and Vic and Victor, yeah. the relationship between him and and uh, Sophia, Sophia's relationships with her family and the, and the disownment and sketchiness stuff with Falcone with her father, like all of this stuff is just incredible. The world building was great from an internal underground feel you don't have you know you have hints of things to come and big stuff you know i was talking with politicians and so then there's a corruption oh, there awesome. yeah like they're trying are to get things, into the mayor's pocket exactly. like <laughs> there are things in it that are gonna that are gonna blossom with other shows and other movies um but the fact that it's it's oh it's its own thing technically it feels great and i'm glad i'm glad for the most part that batman didn't show up at all because yeah. it's cool to obviously see batman because it's funny batman yeah but i'm cool i'm glad that he did it because he can't be everywhere yeah. and when he's dealing with something else something else happens mm -hmm. and that is oz's rise to power that was like i said later on i want to i want to talk about some other people's reviews and like dislikes likes but one of the reviews I saw was after episode seven, which at the end of episode seven, there was the bomb that went off, Oh yeah, um, which is crazy. That was like the biggest physical thing that happened yep. since the start of the episode. Massive. But then I saw a couple people be like, oh, how are they going to wrap this up? They're going to just say that, oh, Batman was busy and he can't, he's not going to show up to a bomb that blew up like a whole block. And so that had me thinking like, maybe he will show up. If he did, I'd be cool. If he didn't, I'd be cool. And the way it ended, I think it was perfect. Like yeah. you texted me, you're like, oh my gosh, that ending. And I texted you about the ending too. Like that shot is yeah. literally out of an animated series yeah. of Batman. Yeah. It oh, was, yeah. dude, that shot's going to go down in like yeah. history. It for does me. actually, it is very much like an, like an animated it's series so where, where, cool. where it, 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 it goes into your inside and then eventually it cuts and it pulls out like this. And then you're about to go into the Batman end credits where Batman's in the shadow, and it's like, bah, 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 oh, yeah. And then like the, bah, bah, the way bah, 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 bah. the bat there, the penguin starts with having a shot towards the end of the Batman. Uh -huh. I really like could see and also hope that the Batman Part Two starts with almost like that same shot. Yeah, and like it goes cool. into the night that like he's cool. he's doing his thing, and then he realizes what Penguin's been doing. Like, how how is Batman gonna react when he finds out? All of the Falcons are gone. All of like the Maronis are gone, yeah. and now it's this Penguin guy who he thought wasn't anyone crazy. He was trying to be I like, mean, yeah. he was trying to ask him, "Who's El Ratalada?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and and now he'll he'll realize that he's someone to a force to be reckoned with. He's got a lot of hands and a lot of things, and he's also unpredictable, which we got a dose of that every episode. Every single episode. You just do not know. You think you know Oz. You think you know the Penguin, but you don't. And he 
double crosses, people that some that that you don't that you don't think that he would have. Yeah. But he's unpredictable. He does mainly worry about himself and what he can get from anything. And that just makes him an interesting character too, because inherently they they you know they go into his backstory and whatnot. But granted, his backstory that breaks the breaks the tropes. He is not a good person, and no. he has not been a good person since he was young. Yeah, killing his brothers. Yeah, like just because he wanted his mom to himself, that's evil. Yeah. Like the fact that we finally found that. Because I'm not gonna lie, it was I was I was enjoying it, but I was also like, are we gonna get? Like, is it is it, is it gonna be? You have a tragic backstory, but then you don't be a villain or a villain per se. That's what I was because, bring up. See, the animated series, they have, you know, some of these villains, origin stories, what they have flaws, they have some look what happened, but they are inherently not all evil, but they're inherently they're villains. You mm -hmm. have to portray them as villains as well. Yeah. Um, you know, besides a couple like Mr. Freeze and whatnot, but Mr. Freeze still does terrible things. Mm -hmm. So he is, he is a villain. He's a sympathetic villain. But I didn't want Oz, or I don't want the Penguin to be completely sympathetic. Mm -hmm. Just like Dan DeVito's Penguin, too. Like, you know, you're, so you're really sympathetic for him the most, for sure. He's like, oh my gosh, you just got thrown away by your parents. But inherently, he wants to take all the firstborn kids, take them to underground, and drown them. Yeah, it's right. a very demented biblical story. <laughs> that are, yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's that's like, actually was that, it, uh, King Herod. Yep. That's yeah. that's a, that's I love that you said that because that's a that's a big thing right now because people are starting to appreciate Batman Returns a lot. So I've been watching a lot of mo a lot of movie reviews mm -hmm. and people and it's been a plethora of people like, hey, Batman Returns is actually not bad. Yeah. Okay, no. This and that. Batman and, Returns used to be. I, I like eighty nine more right now, but yeah. it's, Returns is amazing. Yeah, it is. Uh, and and um, so people are talking about that actually with the whole with the whole biblical story and. and it is messed up and it, he is evil still yeah. um but what i love with this is even though he's sympathetic he is inherently a bad person yeah and the double crosses man yeah it's like crazy. he has a, a uh you know a uh you know a bum kid or whatever that you know needs cash or whatever and uh he then he starts to befriend this this kid and brings him into his like take him takes him by his under his, his wing under, yeah his wing under his wing pun intended yeah. um and you see that and you see you see victor's growth of being a timid kid to then being able to take do some things that even it still affects him because he's just used he's not used to all of this yeah. but you see them as a really good you know uh family pretty much mm -hmm. and dude like he acts as him yeah. that shocked the crap out of me dude that that was the moment I'm that i was like i did not like that this had to happen same but it had to happen i am yep but it, it's same i don't i don't like that it happened yeah. you know because you know they built so they built this bond that's like holy crap i know we're kind of going all over the place but screw it no it's hard not um, to it's but... hard not to but it's because we just watched the season finale yeah um uh now I'll date this episode by, by by the way oops this one's got to come out <laughs> before we filmed it oh wow yeah um it's cassettes <laughs> instant videos oh gosh sam will love that <laughs> um but uh yeah no he acts as him and he's like dude you built this you built this relationship up like crazy and when they're sitting sentimental and you think this is the end this is the last episode it's like, dude, like family it's, and he yeah. kills him dude and and he knows that like you're the only one besides my mom knows that i'm that i'm you know i have a soft spot i can't yeah. let that happen mm -hmm. and also i just think he knows too much there's no way that he would have been able to let him go he victor Crabbe probably could have left in in the uh like like the first yeah, couple that, episodes that episode if he, if he, he just left to. it would have been done yeah but he didn't unfortunately he got into it he got he got way too fixed into it and yeah. you just can't you just can't uh trust anyone especially in, especially in that line of work um I but think... yeah I like where we are going all over the place, but I, in that in that moment too, another thing that I just thought about was to add another layer to why Oz did what he did with killing Victor, which sucked. Um, was the fact that all of the other mobs bosses just got killed by yeah. their second in command, yep. and Victor is Oz's second in command. Uh -huh. So like, <clears throat> what's he thinking there? Like, yes, at that moment Victor was feeling prideful because. He did what was right in Oz's mind, and Oz was like super patting him on the back. It was awesome to see. Terrible to think about why they're happy, but like 
as a viewer of a show that's like this is great content and then he's like will that happen to me so it could be that reason it could be like he knows too much it could be i'm done with connections and my mom's dead to me anyway because she's a vegetable mm -hmm. so you're the only left person left and yeah um that's the biggest point about this entire show that i am super happy about is the fact that you can see the sides of Oz that are human. Yeah. But it's, he's so far gone since he was a young boy. And like, I feel like that was the moment. The Victor one was the moment where it's like, no, nah, he's just, he's just evil. But you can tell a story like that and still keep them evil. You don't oh, have yeah. to, oh, like, oh, it's oh. the closest thing I can relate it to is Joker. Like, yeah. That was probably even more sympathetic, I think to the character than mm -hmm. than penguin was but still they both end and they end glorifying everything they've done yeah in their own way and you have other content that's come out in the past few years hate to keep mentioning it but accolade and stuff of that sense yeah. where it's like hey we have good and evil but like do we like uh, yeah. the penguin is like you have the batman movie being <coughs> going from vengeance to hope and you have the penguin just gradually degrading into this sense of madness and that's yeah. like this version of the penguin could could come up to this version's joker the joker has to be way more crazy than than like i think heath ledger's to even combat with yeah this oz's craziness that'd be interesting to see because if it is barry cogan um which is which is it's gonna be um barry cogan's characters in some of these films that he that he's been in dude creep be as shit he looks killing of a sacred deer with colin farrell and I nicole kidman that. i did not know that Bro, colin was in that too it is it and he's great in it too dude it is uncomfortable because he gets in these in this family's head like crazy and it's like whoa the manipulation there is like astronomical so and they seem like they're going to be playing this off with like a more disfigured joker if that's mm -hmm. that that's the case too so that'll add to the creepiness but then what are you going to bring to that yeah like we might need to see i would love to see i don't know if that's going to happen but i'd love to see the poison gas with the laughing but you make it where it's like it's not like clean looking like jack nicholson's yeah. where they would get the her the, the, his same grin but i think it needs to be more of like do you remember the dark Knight returns when joker lays waste to the uh that show mm -hmm. and you have the Painful. main yeah you have yeah you have the main talk show host where he's just like on the ground and he starts yeah. laughing and you, you have this pain you have this you just go to this low shot and he, his eyes are wide uh tears are falling grin like crazy it's just bananas looking mm -hmm. and i think that would be that would be something we need we need to do and then just have his intimidation factor yeah it has to be up to 11 because oz yeah. oz is already the penguin's there. already there you know <laughs> so but yeah no um yeah he yeah the, it, colin farrell killed this dude like it's still crazy that that's colin farrell it's like you can hear a little dude. bit now now you can hear a little bit granted you know he's you know he, he doesn't speak doesn't speak like that yeah and he's got an accent for sure and it's hilarious to hear because he's just, it's a dope accent yeah but, uh, it was like whoa who's but this i guy? just keep thinking of bullseye <laughs> um <laughs> but uh it's like, um, hey, you know look at the irish man like, <laughs> <laughs> what is he irish scottish i don't even know I uh yeah he's uh, yeah he's irish he's irish okay yeah. look at that yeah. dude that's a, that is a that is an attractive man <laughs> they had to which yeah. was one of the points that they brought up on the when i was listening to the behind the scenes stuff was the fact that you know they asked him like uh how do you feel about it not looking like you because a lot of actors want their face to be attached to their role so they can get like some recognized. character actors though he was like when i read the script and already having played the batman like for a few minutes he was like i wanted to do more and it, it turns out he was actually the one who initially like talk to matt reeves and uh, i don't know if it was greg frazier the the dp mm -hmm. but he said hey like can we do a penguin show because i love this so much and then they kind of like threw it to the side but then it actually happened and he was like wow i didn't know that was actually gonna happen and he loved the script so much he loved the character he loved the idea of playing it and the prosthetic work is immaculate like yeah that's probably the best 
fat suit and like neck I've ever seen. Yeah. And then his dial, what do you call it? The dialect training. Like, yeah. That's a lot. Oh, Going no. from like your Irish accent to like a the New York, a accent. New York yeah. accent. And it sounds like he's from New York. Yeah. My favorite thing every time is when they say like the, you got a white foot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Where yeah. does the I come from? It's an so. R. You think so? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few memes from the finale, the part where he said, uh, <laughs> yeah, he was like, eh, hey, whoa, 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 with a vegetable, she's a vegetable. And <laughs> dude, I, I, want it, I, I want to make an edit with him and then uh, John Bernthal's Shane or Frank from The Punisher. I feel like if we saw them two on screen, it would be the most like, like epic conversation where nothing's said. Oh, I like, know. Hey, Hey, wait, what, the, what are you doing here? Oh my gosh. What are you showing me? <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Dude, it's, it's so good. It is good, man. I'm the, so, great things about the penguin. Oh, yes. Many. Here we are. Here we are. We've talked about many, uh -huh. but we haven't talked about enough. Um, by the way, I saw a short clip before you got here from a different podcast that also reviews movies and shows and whatever. It's the one who hates Man of Steel, which I have beef with them for that, but then he oh. also loves cars too. I want to shake his hand and punch him at the same time. <laughs> but um, yeah, they both, they were basically just like what we've been doing for the past 20, 30 minutes. The guy says, oops, the guy says, why is my audio so low? The guy says, so the penguin and the other guy says, yeah. Yeah. And he was like, I can't even like, he was like, wrap your head around it. And basically they were finishing each other's sentences in the best way possible because they couldn't comprehend how amazing the penguin was. And that's how we feel. And that's how so many people feel. And that's how everyone in the world should feel after yeah. watching this. If you don't like this show, then I would say there is a good place for, for you in the pits of hell. It, basically. Um, <laughs> No, that's too much. <laughs> <laughs> but the idea is there. Yeah. Um, but great things about the penguin, everything from the little to the big. <laughs> We're going the the tone of this show. Yeah, I mean it. Like I in mean, comparison to the Batman, in cohesion with the Batman, and as its own thing. Here's my thoughts with that. I think be, this show allows Gotham to breathe and allow Gotham to live. I think this has more of a character than anything in the batman actually that's i agree with you but that's crazy it is think about it think about it besides well, besides oz besides oswald and maybe a little bit of falcone for the most part everybody else is very neutral and also well i mean the cop that talks like this wait in the, in the batman <laughs> the batman and and Dude, in the that, penguin so a side note that guy <clears throat> and the sal's wife <laughs> oh, talk about a lot of cigarettes. Like, you got her talking like... <laughs> TT fall home, dude. <laughs> like a cheese grater, dog. <laughs> like, just taking I'm some like, provolone cheese and going like... <laughs> I, I I've seen her in a couple things. And yes, I can't, I I, like, I'm not trying to make fun, but dude, like, it takes me out of it, bro. <laughs> she, she, she was my least favorite part about the view. And because oh every time she got on screen, she, she was like, <laughs> that what you going to do with it? And then the other guy's like, I am alone going to do this for you. Like, what is, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe it's something they have wrong with their voice, but the performance <laughs> is still good. It's just, it is good. Yeah. Those two were a trip, but yes, back to what you're saying about the tone. I it makes more sense because I thought I initially thought I was saying Gotham, but I realized I said tone, so that's why it makes more sense. Because yeah. yeah, the tone of the show it's more dynamic because it's on Max. More dynamic because Definitely. it's on Max, and because they have the rated R rating. That's why the show is. I'm about to say it better than the Batman. The show, I The Penguin, agree. is better I would agree. than The Batman. I would agree. I I've cannot believe you said that, though. I've said that's it to crazy. a couple people already, and a couple of them have been like, oh, wow, I got to check it out. And a couple of them are like, no, nah, that's crazy. Wow. And I'm like, <clears throat> that's just what it is. I love The Batman. Um, but like... The show has eight hours of content to breathe, like you just said. The yeah. tone is yeah, true. darker. Yeah. They're able to do more. They're able to allow language. They're able to allow even more blood. 
darker with a twist though. It's still there's some it's still yeah. I don't say lighthearted, I don't want to say corny. It's but there's emotion. some things in it. The emotion, like like it, it it's like a whole <clears throat> tidal wave. But it's I don't know, it's more dynamic. It's not all completely serious, like, you know. Yeah, the Batman's very slow. Like you just shit you just shit you just shit your pants and you're like <laughs> just overly pissed for three hours. That's what it feels <laughs> everyone feels like everyone acts like that in the fucking movie. It's just like I shit my pants. <laughs> I'm fucking pissed. So, so, like, they like... so they pooped and they pissed? <laughs> no, they're fucking pissed. Oh. Pissed. <laughs> Okay. Um, no, I understand that that <laughs> mindset. I think Sam would be like, "Wow, so you don't like the Batman, John?" I, I know. Yeah, he would. Yeah, exactly. He's gonna take it to a uh, get a rise like, out of you, but he would. But like, no, I mean, yeah, it make yeah. The Batman is very slow, very methodical, very detective focused. I like that, but classic feeling. But with all serious classic, there is something. There are dynamic characters. Yeah. And the penguin has that for sure. Oh like, man! As soon as you saw him in the oh, first, his first scene in, in the Batman. Mm -hmm. I, oh, oh, and this is just an extension. This and is it's a yeah. good extension too. This is like <laughs> this might be the perfect time to talk about it. How wonderful it feels! I feel like we we just what did we just talk about this? We was it Rings of Power, or was it um, was it Romulus? One of those two. But like it was basically how wonderful it feels to watch something that just came out like in the current era of film and TV and Lord, it'd be yeah. so good. Rings of power. Rings of power. <laughs> you paused the minute. Okay, at least I noticed. Yeah, um, sure. We haven't done our talk on Rings of Power yet, which it's all much to do with. Griffin, where are you at? Yeah, it's all that. You can't. Do you know how much I sacrificed? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that was brilliant, dude. But, like, how yeah. wonderful it feels. I mean, there's been a couple this year. Like I said before we started rolling, I want to, at the end, remind me if I forget, which you're probably going to forget to remind me. So that's going to be great. Damn. But so remind me if I forget to talk about this shows versus movies this year that I've seen. And maybe that you've seen because I feel like we could almost be on the same page, which is very interesting because you don't like shows as much as movies, but I do. Do, you, do I have to say all that again? I'm not afraid. Of it. You don't say that again. Oh. I'll just be like, hey, show us some movies, <clears throat> go. And I'll be okay. like, all right, okay, I'm back in minion mode. Guys, I don't know. What was that? <laughs> How um, wonderful it feels to watch. Yeah, no, it's great. And also the tone and yeah. all that stuff. It's, it's, it's brilliant. We're talking about also with the Batman versus. The Penguin, I think, is more the, the Penguin's overall atmosphere tone, and Gotham itself is more dynamic than the the Batman's. Yeah. <laughs> and this is just because you have more time, for sure. Mm -hmm. But I think it, it it actually this actually helps. Yes, yes. the Batman. Yes, crazy. Yeah, and this will help the Batman too. See, this is what I wanted Star Wars to do. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, this is what it, this is what it is. This is why I don't want to, I don't want to say this is the best DC project ever because it's not because there are no, some that are better. Holy crap, is it like this though? Right? Show wise, oh. this is oh man, yeah. this I mean, oh. live action for sure. I mean, <clears throat> animated. You get into the weeds with animated series, yeah. Superman, Justice League, but live action. I love some other some of the other DC live action shows, but there's nothing that's touching this. Like. Yeah. Thing. I mean, I love the Flash and Arrow for much different reasons than why I love the Penguin. Yeah. Um, but nothing else. Like, this is it. And basically everything I've seen has been in unison. Like, this is an incredible show. Whereas other big IPs, Marvel, uh, Star Wars, those are the two that I think of. But, like, <coughs> there's been, like, highs and lows. But, like, to have the Penguin come out as your second piece of this new Batman universe yep. which is called the batman epic crime saga which is incredible <laughs> oh, wow. that's what you said um but like that that's awesome getting the batman epic crime saga like you start with batman you have so much crime already introduced and you go into penguin just all crime mob mentality yeah in the future of however many batman builders are gonna get and however many spinoff shows like yeah that's I, that's completely thing. fine <clears throat> we talked about, for, about a couple weeks ago like yeah. if this is a limited series sign me up if this is like something where hey after the Batman part two we could have a season two of the penguin 
Maybe. Yeah. Probably, like, yeah. I'm, Probably. Oh, I'm Maybe. confident now that they're going to do a great job. I, it all depends on what they'll do if they have another story to tell. But honestly, then with the way it ends, it is literally the perfect thing of you just have this eight-hour epic museum on that character, and that leads into how he's going to be because... Other than, other than for, for uh, going to toe toe with the with the Batman, I mean, you probably want to have him interact with other villains. But how? What are you gonna do in season two? That would be interesting. Like what you said, only I, I think we should only have one season. Yeah, and I hope so. They don't do the Joker route. Like, no. If it truly is good, <clears throat> then I'm down. But like, I don't know. Um, but if you have other shows, yeah, too now, like how? Like, how what if you did another villain character? Like, yeah. Like, I don't know, like, uh, the hush. Yeah. If you didn't do him in two, or if you show him in two a little bit to be in three, but yeah. you do what you did with the Batman Penguin, like, you could have, maybe they crack the code on why movies that try and throw in so many villains struggle when they could just do something like this. And how cool would it be if, like, maybe after the Batman 2, you have, or maybe currently now, I don't know, probably the Batman 2, um, you have a, a limited... Arkham Asylum series, and it's and it's like American Horror Story. I haven't seen that. But... Yeah, and it's like supposed to be you know real creepy. Mm -hmm. You could add a lot of you know some characters that are more obscure and more creepy. Like you could add them. You could have a Mad Hatter acting Dude, super creepy and acting super creepy. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and you can go into the fantastical, maybe with a little bit of a realism if you can, feeling. Uh, with some of the fantastic characters, you just have a, you just have it, just an Arkham Asylum style um, story mm -hmm. that could be awesome. And Hugo Strange is probably one of the main, oh yeah, one of the main Definitely characters. Awesome. I mean, you, you, could, you could easily Hugo Strange. You could easily, I mean, Harley. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh yeah. Joker's already there. Riddler's yeah. there. Like, oh, yeah. So you have four your big characters. You, you bring in Jim Gordon when you need to. Mm -hmm. Don't bring the Batman, but if you had, if there is a Robin character, and, and, and yeah. if that movie, you could have him appear, or you know, if they really want to do Barbara Gordon, but Barbara Gordon just just almost like a detective almost, mm -hmm. but no suit. I don't know. I, I, that's kind of a, a wild, like if they really want to go realistic, mm -hmm. but still. Um, uh, Whatever that's gonna be, like don't don't bring the Batman in, unless unless you do it once, where he's like just pushing the Joker or pushing, uh, you know, a criminal into Arkham when they came by the cops. Like very Arkham was the first Arkham South game. Where he's pushing Joker oh, yeah. into it, and that's when Joker me, before he, before he like escapes. Mm -hmm. um, but you could do that, but like have it off in the distance. Was like almost oh, the Batman. Mm -hmm. no, you don't have to do that yeah. unless it really calls for it to have the Batman in the sh in these shows. Don't do it. Yeah, and show glimpses. It worked but... with the Penguin. Yeah, like you got. Oh, yeah. You had you had the feeling that this was in Batman's oh, world like, sure. immediately. There was nothing ever that happened that <clears throat> took me out of it or didn't feel like it lived up to the original. It literally is on the it's on the same playing field as the movie, which is. Yeah crazy how good shows have gotten these days I and it being an HBO well, Max show like they do spend so much time to make their stuff look like movies it's crazy yeah, like, yeah. Westworld that looked great I haven't seen Game of Thrones across the dragon but those are literally some of the highest rated shows of television oh yeah um yeah. man so we talk all about tone <clears throat> that's uh, good that's good it's dude it's so good I, I just you could tell we've been needing to talk about something like this for a while. Yes. And it sure. sucks. I don't think Sam has seen this yet, which is why he's not here. But we have told him countless times he needs to see it. And he, I would agree. He, he is going to watch it definitely not before cool. Batman Part 2. Yeah. So let's talk about the other standout in this show. That's the actress that played Sofia Falco. Mm -hmm. Which her name is? Kristen Milioti. Yeah. I think. Well, I, I, that's her name, but like I don't know the pronunciation. Right. Um, she was great. She yeah. was terrific, man. Her Insane. her performance, like, was just phenomenal. Uh, you know, she even she even had her own standalone episode with yeah. her origin story, with her getting framed and being the hangman or or, or cited as the hangman, and 
in prison for a decade yeah uh at arkham oh, another thing mm -hmm. um yeah it was great you know she played she acted with so much confidence it was a absolutely amazing and i what i loved is that you can tell she was born to play this character and loved to play this character you can i haven't had an actor that has acted in a while that i'm that i see it and i see the performance i'm like wow they love what they're doing right here. yeah no I, I i feel you could feel it with her for sure and i feel like you could also feel it with him colin farrell but like yeah. doesn't look like him yeah the other, the other one that's closest is uh hugh jackman that played wolverine and oh, played yeah. he played in deadpool wolverine yeah, I mean, I do generally do feel like he's having the time of his life, especially yeah. with some scenes. That's all I'll say with that one. But uh, <laughs> because I still haven't seen it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just told everybody <laughs> the confidence right there. Holy crap! I've been watching the penguin. <laughs> I mean, that's a good alternative. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, she, dude, it was she was great. She's kind of hot. It's crazy, cause she. I don't know who she is. Yeah. I didn't know who she was. Um, yeah. I mean, she was in a couple other things. People kept saying she was in like The Sopranos, which I don't know if she was, but oh. I don't know. There's some correlation there, but like she did. She said when I listened to the podcast behind the scenes, whatever, she was saying like, I love Batman. I've always wanted to play a female character in any Batman. Like I think she started trying with Nolan's trilogy and just nothing happened or whatever. Oh. Um, so that that is like literally true like she loves this character and thank god she's potentially supposed to be in the batman part two yeah because like they if they killed one more character i would have been like <laughs> oh okay that's cool yeah i know it's also interesting to just keep it as sophia Falcone. it's definitely i i feel like it is while it is of the times i think it's the best the best i've ever seen no, no, yeah, because yeah. like it makes sense. No, no. I'm, I'm completely okay with it. I'm completely I happy too. with it. Like, I, I agree. This just right, this right, well, real, well written yeah. female characters. Like, yeah, that's all. That's all we need. Like, like, hello, Sarah Connor, Ripley. We love these. We love those women, man. Come yeah. on, those are dope characters. And like this year, dude, we got. I mean, the Penguin with Sophia. We got Romulus with. Uh, yeah. I can't remember hey. the characters' names, but yeah, Kaylee yeah. Spaney, the yeah. big girl. Mm -hmm. She was great. Um, yeah many other shows that i've seen that have great stuff but oh, yeah. um yeah kristen miliotti obviously uh the goat colin farrell yeah i think he's super underrated he's at bullseye he's in sugar on apple tv plus yeah i thought it was great people hated it once the plot twist happened because it is probably this most ridiculous plot twist ever and then the penguin oh he's great in this one movie where he plays <laughs> He plays the son of a businessman, of a, uh, of a businessman, and so he's tar he's starting to take this uh, this role as as being a boss. And he's got no hair right here, but he's got hair right here, the mustache and everything. And he's he's the biggest douchebag ever, dude. It's like the it's hilarious. Tom Cruise and um yeah yeah that's how yeah that's how it feels, dude. He's got oh, the but big he, hands. Oh, dude, yeah, that's all. Like, <laughs> that's literally Vinny. That's, <laughs> that's what do you think? Don't Vinny. negotiate with terrorists or something. <laughs> I will have your face. <laughs> or so whatever you say. Um, but um, yeah, no, he is phenomenal. He's a, I mean, he's always been a great, great actor. But this right here just solidifies that he's also an amazing character actor. He reminds me of Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman doesn't care if his face is yeah. in the movie. He wants to be, you know, be those characters that have the makeup and stuff like that. So very yeah. much a like. It's not that it, you don't see that. It's though. classical. It's yeah. very classical where the actors do have a th an obsession but also a thin line of themselves and the character they're trying to play mm -hmm. um and if they're able to unite that it's kind of oh colin farrell but i'm also invested in the character he's playing so it's not colin farrell right now that's yeah. impressive because you know star power is star power mm -hmm. um but yeah i mean gary Oldman has star power for sure but yeah. why is it that you know he's able to blend in and you don't really care you, he's a great character, but you probably don't really care. He's, oh, you also don't. he is okay with that. Yeah, he's because he knows that even if his character's in it for a brief, 
steals a show or yeah. makes an impression. He did. There's I mean, never, never there's never a, a a film where he doesn't make an impression. Yeah. I can say that with confidence. Like the, the I mean in the Batman, one of my favorite things was the penguin. Yeah. I think it was Catwoman, then I mean Batman and then the Penguin. Um and then yeah, he, he had his time to shine in the show. But him, Gary Oldman, like Daniel Day Lewis, Christian Bale type people, oh, yeah. like those they bring an extra echelon to like dude, what even, they do. Dude, even freaking the remake of Robocop, which is <sighs> disappointing i despise it the original movie, original classic is amazing however he he was in it and uh, gary oldman he played a doctor that was helping alex murphy be you know, as a robocop i loved him in that movie he's the best thing about it him and my pete like michael keaton mm -hmm. yeah gordon and batman are, are together and rick flag who plays robocop um yeah but uh and the original robocop voice batman he did <laughs> Yeah, Peter Weller. Um, so RoboCop wouldn't exist without Batman. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, but uh, what was I saying? Gary Oldman in RoboCop. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's he's charismatic in that. He's just freaking incredible, and and, and you know he's a character. Just mm. playing, he's a, he's playing a specific character, a supporting character. Um, but Colin Farrell is able to do that, but he takes this on full swing ahead as the main character mm -hmm. and i think he acted perfectly in this like one and just best, in general one of the best performances of i all think so time. especially one that you you can really buy that's not that it's not colin farrell even though it is yeah it's like yeah. it literally just looks like colin it farrell's like, like long lost cousin second cousin or something it's, it, like it looks like oswald cobb but it also does look like oswald like Cobb it's or Cobblepot, yeah, yeah, Cobblepot. That's whatever. Like, yeah, if that's the one I, thing I, about your show that's not good, then that's a that's like biggest nitpick of all I'm, time. I'm fine. I'm fine with them doing Cobb because you don't want to say Cobblepot all the time. Um, but you could have at least hinted at it being Cobblepot at like you know at the end or something or some type of thing. It's like, oh, okay, great. But they're just doing it as a nickname. Yeah, I yeah. think that's too much. That that does make me a little bit alarmed with like, what you don't think Cobblepot? You think Cobblepot is corny? I when they talked about that on one of the Come on. podcasts, the, Come on. the showrunner, and no, actually no, Matt Reeves was on that episode too with uh, the showrunner, which was I felt like I was in the presence of a god or something, but like <laughs> I was in my car, um, oh, and they both talked about why they changed the name to Cobb instead of Cobblepot, and it boiled down to them still trying to do the groundedness, but also in their research of real world last names they said that they really struggled to find anyone with the last name cobblepot so they didn't want that to be the one outlying thing of being too f like not real do you do you see do you see how much length goes into making sure it doesn't be corny when it's inherently it is a it's a super villain character. it's a comic book super villain yeah that and 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 it's like, yeah, like for me, it doesn't change anything for the show. No, it and I'm doesn't. Sure for you doesn't. too. No, it's just it's like, just kind of like, uh, like I'll take this and not complain about it versus like changing who the character is. You know because... what they could do? They could they, they could just be okay and be confident as hell in the characters that they're trying to bring to life, and just do it and put, be it be earnest. And be serious. They have a serious did it, and they had yeah. no problem with it. Like I, I don't never think, corny. I don't think the show would be any different if they actually kept Cobblepot as the name. No, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, like, it, it's, it's definitely a nitpick, but it's also kind of like one of those nitpicks that are like, well, yeah, it's one of those. Why? That's like, why? Yeah, yeah. yeah it is no, no, no. That's actually a, that's a per. Uh, and the, I believe it or not, on a side note, the Joker too is very much a why. What Lee Quinn? Well, not, well, that, but just in general. Why? Oh, yeah, yeah. But the Lee Quinn as well, dude. That's just kind of like, come on. I mean, I get Harleen Quinzel or Quinzel is a little like, come on. But it's cool. It's like, like Lee Harley's Quinn. Harley's a name. Yeah, it is. It's like, I guess, yeah, Cobblepot, that's hard to find, but Harley is everywhere. I don't know. Harley Davidson? Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, <laughs> you leave that broke you. Yeah, it did actually. There's a freaking mosquito in here. It's bothering me. Mosquito or fly? It's a fly. Oh. The flies. I want to watch that again. Brundle fly. You do. I was talking to Shats in their Discord just, uh, a week ago about it. Really? Yeah. I love the fly. I think it's McNeil. It's tragic, dude. Yeah. McNeil said something about a new movie, uh, the, the Substance. I haven't seen I it. I need to see that. It's with Demi Moore. Yeah. I heard it's amazing. Yeah, it's I've been like, hearing oof. rave reviews. And yeah. so McNeil said he saw it. And then Chat said something like, I love David Cronenberg's stuff. So I can't wait to watch it. And I was like, wait, that's not Cronenberg, though. And he was like, oh, I misspoke. But then we started talking about Cronenberg. And I was like, have you seen The Fly? Like, that movie's amazing. And he was like, dude, it's one of the best horror movies ever. It is. Best body horror movies. It is. And like. Oh, it is. But dude. it's so freaking emotional, dude. Oh, it is. Especially, especially at the end. Oh, my gosh. It's just so hard to watch. But also, like, you can't close your eyes. No, it's so true, man. And, and Jeff Goldblum's performance. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Like, why isn't that talked about? Uh, I know it's not it a will horror be. month. But, like, why isn't it? It was we none of us had it on our I, I just feel like it was genuinely a good movie that it didn't is. have to mention yeah. it as an underrated no, but yeah. like it yeah. also hasn't been talked about that much I know you always hear Halloween Scream Nightmare it's like yeah where, where are these one off horror movies that are like oh I got I got plenty yeah like the miseries the oh yeah the get outs yeah. the the ones that we meant Tusk that we forgot to mention Tusk. that Shats commented on our video yeah, thank dude. you Shats because yeah, Tusk good. is great oh creepy but great yeah oh yeah for sure should have mentioned Creep Creep and Creep 2 Creep 2 is great too oh <laughs> Creep Creep 2 is great too um yeah but yeah so that was uh don't ask me how we got there because I genuinely do not know. Um, so yeah, we talk about the tunnel. We talk about Oz. We talk about Sofia Falcone slash Gigante. Yes. I, I, I would like to say that that's like a reference to Giganta, but I know it's not. Music's done by Mick Giacchino, the son. The son. Of a motherless goat. It's the son of Michael Giacchino. Um, Michael yeah. Giacchino being... One of the legends of our era yeah. who so gracefully composed the Batman's score. Dude, his Rogue One theme is amazing. Rogue One, you got, I mean, the Incredibles. Oh, dude. Oh, ho, ho. Um, you got so many other movies Peak. that I just forget that he did. Peak. Um, I love his I love his soundtrack to uh, Fallen Kingdom. He did do Fallen Kingdom. It's the best thing about the movie. I'm going to look up Michael Giacchino's composing su successes. Yeah. Oh yeah, um, um, yeah. No, uh, I mean, oh, dude, the pig. It's it's not an Apple Music man. I had a, I didn't put a DSer on that. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> how do I find who composed what? <laughs> man, that dude looks like that dude looks like <laughs> Seth Rogen's dad. <laughs> Whoa, it looks like Seth Rogen's dad. Do you see that? Had had some type of a, a, a relationship with David Fincher. Wow, yeah. and then and then I yeah it, I just forgot what it was. Um, yeah, let me look at this. How do you even do composer? There we go. Man, one hundred sixty six movies, Jeez. Wow. or titles, I guess. But like, that, and we've done thousands of videos. Who? We we have. Yeah, I don't remember. For working. Oh. <laughs> There's no way he composed Thor Love and Thunder. Please tell me that's not true. If that's true, he's going down a notch in my book. Gosh, wrestle. He composed Thor Love and Thunder. Nah, it's whatever. Yeah, look how quickly. He's look explained. Look how he did quickly. the Batman. He did No Way Home. Yeah, he did. Why am I talking about my nose? He did... <laughs> I have to. ...an American Pickle, which is a movie I want to see. It's got Sam in it. I lost Seth Rogen. He did Spider-Man Far From Home. He did. That was a very big breath. Maybe because I can't breathe. <laughs> I can't breathe either. So you can't breathe this because he did Incredibles because... two. Yeah. He did Fallen Kingdom. Blah blah blah. He did War for the Planet of the. He did the Planet of the Apes trilogy. Ah, uh, he did. Yeah. He did Coco, which I started watching the other day because I heard it was like incredible, and I fell asleep in seven minutes. How early or late did you see it? I watched it at, like. Oh, I watched it at 12 o'clock in the you're afternoon. You're also Spanish. So 12 o'clock in the afternoon is a nap time. 
I had Atlas with me and I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now you know when we were downstairs, they're watching their stuff. I'm going to watch something with him. And I was like, let me watch a new movie. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, because you're, you, cause you're all going. All I heard was like, da, 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 da. <laughs> like, like, I'd rather watch Nacho Libre. I don't know. Coco is, I think, I don't know. Moana is where it's at. Coco's not where it's at. How many controversies are we trying to do here? I'm trying to do a lot, bro. Hey, for real. Wow. You just, you just, you literally just morphed into the most dad thing I've seen in my life. You want me to, you, you want me to put the hammer down? You want me to bring controversy into this episode? You want me to do that? You want me to do that? Uh, uh warning. He loves his hammer. <laughs> <laughs> BBS is great. Silver War is not. No. No, that's a lie. Yeah. They're both great, but Come I like on. BBS better. Come on. BBS is better. Come on. BBS is better. Come I have. I watched it recently. Say it again. Man. Let me say it again. I watched it recently. Let me say it again. BBS is better than Civil War. Ah, dude. Come on. Don't do that to me. Keep in mind. Don't do that to me. I'm not saying objective. I'm saying my opinion. My opinion is right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you fuck. He did Rogue One. He did Doctor Strange. So yeah. all in all, he did a lot of stuff. But I think the Batman Shoot. is probably one of my favorites from him. And I didn't know his son was also a composer, which is cool. Um, yeah. He's super awkward. When I heard him on the episode, he was like, yeah, you know, we just just kind of did it. And it just happened. And I was like, it's a little bit too close to home. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> that's me. That just, that's me too. That's, that's me to an extent. Like, I if like I just don't know what's going on or it's not, it's nothing's not feeling, something's not feeling right. Oh, just, yeah. Like, how'd, you, into that. how'd you accomplish this, this shot or this edit? It's like, which did it. Oh, oh, like this is what this, this is why we do why. podcasts instead of <laughs> other stuff. I don't know. Um, music that's a, that's a check. That's great. It fits in the line of the Batman. Yeah, so good. The Penguin main theme, which I did find somewhere, oh. is great. Yeah, just like every other theme. The subtle Catwoman theme coming yes. in when Selena Kyle sent the letter I love to Sophia. That. Dude, that was that like I love that. Oh, it got me right good there. Too. That is Giacchino's one of those yeah. best. I think that's better than the Batman's theme. Why? Yeah, no, I mean it's, because that is yeah. the that is literally like an amazing interpretation of Catwoman. It's so on brand. It's so the Batman. It, it, I mean, it's, so it's cool. It's great. Too, like, but it's the Batman's theme is great, but it could be done better and. It could be done differently. Mm -hmm. So Catwoman, that just screamed Catwoman, dude. It's like and so elegant and, and it is. And I, I and I think we're gonna get the el that elegance probably down the road. But I was definitely when I when, before walking into the Batman, I was definitely like, "Yo, are we gonna see a scene where Bruce is at a ball, and then you have Catwoman like uh, be unveiled and she's walking down, uh, or Selena's walking down in a nice dress, and you have him enamored by her." And you have that music, and it just takes center stage, and all the audio cuts out, and then immediately the, their hands unite, and they start like kind of like this and that mm. before something happens, and he goes off. I think that's that's part two or part three. Yeah. I hope so, man. Because we got that in Returns. And, oh, Returns is amazing for that. But yes, Rises. Rises is okay. Yeah. No, that's not I okay. Think it's, it's I think good. both games are it's great. It's good. It's good. But the other one had more stakes, man. She literally brought a gun. I just love when Anne Hathaway says, um... That's what it sounds like. You all say the rest of us. It's like, what the... That's a lot of... Bossy, 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 bossy. I, I, yeah, it's literally like a lot of teeth in that no, one shot, dude. The one line, like, it's kind of hot, but say, like... There's, there's a storm coming, Mr. Wayne. Yes. Like, it's so like... That's great. I don't know, like the way she delivers it is like she knows exactly what's going to happen. Especially when she says, I'm adaptable. Yeah. Like, like that's great. That scene is great. It's hot. Like, it, it's Anne Hathaway's a great Catwoman. She is. Like, no, yeah. I, sure. I don't think we've ever gotten a bad Catwoman, which is crazy to say. But well, like, I think, oh, well, I haven't seen that one. Man. But like the mainstream ones, like yeah. Michelle Pfeiffer, Anne Hathaway, and um, Zoe Kravitz, like all three solid. My favorite Zoe Kravitz. Okay. I just feel like she's Arkham Games Catwoman, which she is my is. favorite iteration. She is, so, absolutely, yeah. But then, like, Michelle Pfeiffer being classic, and then, like, Anne Hathaway yeah. being, like, a, a modern version of the classic ones, like... Yeah. No, I, I agree. Don't know. I agree. Um, we're, we're on a tangent there. I know, this, this whole episode's tangents, but, but like, it's yeah. just the Penguin's so good because it's so of good. tangents. Yeah. True, true, um, nice. 
No, yeah, she was. It was great when you heard her theme. It, yeah, it, yeah. Show. That was yeah. So, I mean, what else? I mean, there Oz's Oz and his mom's relationship was just so heartbreaking, man. It's just a lot of hard. So many things because like you don't oh, find out. Sick. So many spoilers, but like you don't find out until the last episode that his mom knew the entire time what he did. Yep. But the entire time she was playing the part of I'm going to be proud of my son for the things he's accomplishing while also push him to be someone who he might not even be able to be. And then he takes that and f it fuels him because he's like, wow, my, I'm the only son because I murdered my two brothers. Yeah. So my mom really loves me the most, which is already crazy in and of itself. Like that's something that is just wrong. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then at the last episode, he's put in a position, which is probably one of the best moments in the entire show, I think. Like the scene with him, with Oz, with his mother, and Sophia. Oh, yeah. That's just like, it felt like forever, but it also felt like it went so quick mm -hmm. because they're just, Oz and his mother are strapped down into a chair and Sophia's mm -hmm. got the power. She's walking around all suave and like yeah. cunning and That's like... Great. I know what you did, but I want to hear you say it type thing. That's and like a, your mom wants to hear you say it too, even though she knows what you did. That's a great, yeah, that's a great scene. The dude did not let go. That was the finale is perfection because it truly solidifies what you said earlier. The penguin being a villain because he is not a good dude. Like the two, just two of the things he does in the finale, he kills Victor who we know and love and he also does not get does not let his lie go like to waste like he kept that lie since a little yeah. boy and even his mom's finger was going to get cut off and if he didn't tell her then the like, more stuff would have happened to her yeah and it's she just, got yeah. fed up and she said like i know like yeah i mean it's goes to show you man he 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 is selfish and he even though he loves his mom, like, yeah, it was, it was getting to the point where, like, wow, he was really just going to let that happen. He just did not care. Like, Sophia was right. Like, wow, you really don't, you don't care about her as much as you put off. Yeah. And it's like, geez, dude. Like, it's only, the only thing that keeps him human. Yeah. Like, maybe that's what he was always wanting to have around. Yeah. Like, he said that earlier on in the show. Like, he was like, that's what keeps us human. Like, she's, yeah. she's what keeps me human. Yeah. And, like, he's told himself that for years on end. Oh, yeah. Because like, now, now, now look at what we're going to get. Now he has no attach attachments. Technically not. But she, yeah, she's alive, but she's a vegetable, so it don't matter. Yeah. Like, Eat your vegetable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was so wrong. <laughs> I don't know if I can cut that out. <laughs> That's all I heard when you said that. <laughs> I just heard Oz. <laughs> I just heard Oz trying to feed Victor or something. <laughs> Do that to me right now, man. I'm so so fucking, your vegetables. So fucking random that I fucking <laughs> die, dude. I just, I'm all so high. You dude. see that guy saying, "Eat your vegetables, son." <laughs> You gotta eat them. Come on, man. Can you put a fucking picture in your. No, notes? that's a link to someone's review. <laughs> But yes, John's dying because of what I said, which came out of random central. Yeah, that's but, great, dude. Um, yeah, his his and his mom's relationship is is something crazy because a son and a mother is one of the relationships in in cinema that like, along with a father and a daughter, have the most like whole, especially when you are us, when you are a male, when you are of the men side of the world yeah you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay. um yeah it's yeah. like i don't know like oz is demented and so is his mother in a way but like yeah. you also can understand why he would want to go to these lengths to protect his mother but then at the end he doesn't yeah like oh, yeah. maybe he thinks like oh it's just a finger she's gonna survive but like that's still messed up yeah big time um and the things he does going into like the progression of how crazy he gets with with his with his kills or what he does what he says like i feel like it just escalates each episode like the one that's in my mind is when he burns uh 
Sal's wife and yeah, son man. alive. Like, oh, it's crazy. I I knew something was going to happen, but I didn't know that was what is going to be like. That's or how just... about or how about like there's just this this interesting way when Sal spoiler, you know, uh, Salvatore Moroni dies. Yeah. So another crime boss who we have not seen him interact with Batman, whatever. Um, pa uh, has a heart attack and then and passes while he while he's fighting Oz and Oz mm -hmm. is like down out of nowhere like I beat you ha 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 and then shoots him as if he's got the upper hand he's like dude yeah. I don't know if he would have beaten you but he had the upper hand yeah no, it just, you know, he's dude. very much like because it, it was almost like his thing almost got like robbed so he wanted to yeah. still like have he's like, Come on, it's, yeah. it's also very much a thing of like when you get tossed around and shit and something happens like yeah 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 you like you want to see it through very much childlike yeah. too um yeah that that was that was great man yeah yeah and and uh yeah there's a lot of similarities with with i guess penguin's character and uh homelanders yeah absolutely. where they both just almost like <clears throat> make their own story and somehow yeah. get people to believe them but also they just want to be loved yeah oh yeah which is scariest place to be in if you're a villain yeah that's um, true yeah because what you're doing is what you think is doing you're doing right yeah like he like, really does yeah um, oh yeah that's like dangerous and it, and it goes into the whole thing of like oh, what are you talking about you no, you she's having an episode like she yeah doesn't know what she's talking about it's like dude that's insane yeah dude, it was great so now we're going to be looking at some people on the internet's reviews of the penguin whether good or bad just some screenshots i took from facebook some letterbox reviews and some q reviews q is the better app by the way <laughs> one day john will join it and he will never look back so but uh these ones are going to be on facebook some of them are long so i'll kind of paraphrase some of them but like this first one this was an excellent example of the writers letting the story tell itself no egos no agendas they just set it up and let it flow this was smooth storytelling and maybe the best show I've watched in decades. My brother and I envisioned the majority of the story from the first episode, but it was still a thrill to watch it all play out. Masterpiece. I sincerely hope the Emmys remember the show next year. Everyone involved deserves to be recognized. Yeah, I would Couldn't agree. agree more. I would agree. Like, especially yeah, with that incredible. last statement, like, I feel like Colin at Farrell, least... Man. Colin Farrell, Christian, uh, Kristen, Kristen Miliotti, Oof. as two of the leads like male and female yeah. and then you got supporting actors I th and actresses i think both of them could be nominated multiple different people yeah oh yeah um the uh the makeup department oh yeah like, i feel like that could win something and then obviously the writing <laughs> or yeah. maybe like adapted i don't know what you would call it for tv shows but i know like the oscars is like adapted screenplay like yeah mm -hmm. i don't know but so many people deserve that. their recognition for the show it's just it's incredible to, to witness something like this, honestly. I agree. Um, someone else says, Oz went from a driver that may have been called on to be violent occasionally to a wannabe boss club owner that was also occasionally violent to a drug dealer, manufacturer with homicidal tendencies to a full-blown psychopath. They have to show this Oz deal with someone that's actually worse than he is, a la the Joker. Kind yeah. of what we, I guess, delved into earlier, yeah. where it's like if the Joker does get into this universe, like... Mm -hmm has to be crazier than oz because yeah. oz is probably more sane than joker this version is just crazy yeah um someone said this is the best tv show since breaking bad i haven't seen breaking bad but well, i know it's nah, regarded it's as one of the best have yeah. you seen it i have not <laughs> oh damn dude mcneil if you you're listening to this it, bro you fucking play that off you play that off so well <laughs> mcneil if you're listening to this or watching this john has seen long legs by now yes i have but he hasn't seen breaking Bad. But that, that goes to show you who i am though movie show i'm gonna pick the movie but like yeah i agree though that doesn't make me be like you haven't watched the five seasons of breaking bad that's clock that's easy work for your ass i know yeah one of the shows i want to talk about later is oh. outer banks but yeah <laughs> no five seasons i think i've come to the conclusion five three to five seasons is perfect television well we're having a walk in <laughs> no i'm saying like 
if you want to start by making a good show, <laughs> set yourself up for three oh, to five seasons. Oh, good. You put it. Oh, yeah. You put it do that well. Yeah. Someone said, best thing DC has ever done, in my humble opinion. Can't wait for more of this universe. Literally been saying for 15 years that shows would be the way to go. This setup was perfect, and it showed him truly become a monster. Loved every episode. Um, Like I said earlier, don't think it's the best DC thing has ever done, but like live action in a Definitely perfect character show it's one of them and if it's it is the best live action dc show dc show um <laughs> DC show. <laughs> who else who else who else who else who else who else maybe we'll go into that one letterbox review someone gave it a five stars out of why did you go into the review though that's my question that's my question there you go five stars out of five stars um they said dc rarely cooks good live action projects lately but this is literally fire that's the most hipster review i've ever heard in my life it's okay though it and works then they rated every episode and like they rated episode four and episode eight as an 11 out of 10 which says you everything you need to know yeah, um I'd say so. <laughs> and then uh, lastly some q ratings i haven't put mine up because i just it would be too much Slack. to uh to type just like i haven't put my joker 2 one up because i don't know what i really think about it 97% of people on Q love or like this movie. I mean, show. But it feels like a movie. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to read the one that was a that was a thumbs down. This is interesting. There's two of them. One says boring and way too many F-bombs. Um, okay. Then you should have known what you're getting into when you see the rated R tag on there. Yeah. And also, it's not boring. You just have no... So where's your sense of fun? Yeah. <laughs> like, nice, nice. Um, the other one, amazing story up until the writers suddenly increased plot armor to infinity in the finale. What? The first seven episodes were amazing and then it ends on such a horrible note. I hate it. Um, it's crazy how apparently the last episode could completely ruin the last seven episodes. I mean, yeah, ending is paramount, but it is, but yeah, there's nothing in that finale that changes <laughs> what it was setting up. Oh, I agree. And also plot armor. No, yeah. Like, where's the plot armor? And my like, Oz locked yeah. himself in the, in the, behind a steel door. Yeah. And then, nothing happened that was different. Yeah. <laughs> like, what if plot armor would have been like Vic, like, pinching Oz's nipple and getting out of a <laughs> chokehold, or, I don't know, like. Yeah, I mean, shit. <laughs> no, no, I don't. Uh, I don't get great. that. I don't get it either. But yeah, then people on the other side of the, th of the story are just like us, but a lot of them are saying, like, this has to be considered the best show of the year. Loving the show. Great take on Penguin. The show needs Emmys. A lot of people get... A lot of people get white. <laughs> Bro, they typed that up. It was like, a lot of people get white. Oh, wow. That's great. <laughs> Got a white foot. That's awesome. What the hell? But yeah, um... So the lot of, I mean, the world loves this show, and we love this show. Sam will love this show, and so. uh, now we're going to go into our rating, which we're kind. We've never rated a TV series using this rating system, mm -hmm. so we didn't really think that through. Nope. But it's okay. Though. <laughs> it's basically at the bottom to the top. You have never again. It's not worth watching again clearly not a fan is like yeah it's whatever i'm just not gonna watch it good flick is a good flick you could pop it in have popcorn eat eat coke drink popcorn and have a good day yeah i did that first <laughs> holy crap and then in my collection yeah something you would buy mm -hmm. and then movie magic which is like creme de la creme the dark knights yeah the inceptions the yeah. godzilla minus ones <laughs> um but in this case, it would be show magic or series magic. I think we could go with series magic. Series magic, yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm going to come out the gate by saying this is a definite series magic for me. Uh, which means it's the highest level it could ever possibly receive from humble Justin Silva of Cinema 3D. Uh, if that rating means anything to you, it means a lot to me. Because the show is incredible. Probably used the I word about... 30 times in this episode but like I, I literally can't not think of one thing that's actually wrong with this show you can't say that about a lot of their a lot of other shows uh 
<laughs> yeah, I would agree. So what's your what's your um opinion? yeah, I think mine it's gonna be like, oh it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a good show. Serious magic. Okay. <laughs> That's a good thing to swallow. As a wow. <laughs> we gotta take that and make that a real. Um but um, so tell no, me yeah. why it's a series magic. Uh, no, it, I I really have no issue. I have nitpicks, but no issues. But even like it's the nitpick, very the few are, nitpicks ah, too. The nitpicks are like, yeah, I, I can live without it. Like the nitpicks is like, why was it, I mean. he? Why wasn't his vest like one size larger? Yeah, it was kind of like pettiness, I guess, to an like, extent. Well, to an extent, because you know. Uh, but really yeah. <laughs> But no, it, it's 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 phenomenal. It's literally it is one of the best DC material out there. Mm-hmm. Um, it just has something to say, and that's awesome. It's not just your mindless comic book this or comic book that. It's like this is a comic book adaptation, yep. and it's amazing. And this literally could be a graphic novel. It could yeah. be a. Yeah. It could have been a dark, quirky, to an extent, comic book graphic novel oh it would, been a bit, it, would, it would slay if they just adapted this into a graphic novel just do it just so I can do it just take pictures of Colin Farrell yeah, yeah. no but I like, do some awesome painting or hand drawn hand drawn be amazing um but yeah it has to be serious magic I did have there's no there's really no problems with it um, it's it's perfect. The performance is amazing. The setting is amazing. The tone is amazing. Yep. Cinematography is great, pin sharp and beautiful. Uh, the music's great. The tone, all oh, that stuff. The, dude. the shots, too. The shots the, are, are great. A, a lot of use of tighter shots. Yeah. In a lot of the dialogue heavy sequences, which just kept you so focused on what they're talking about. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And like, this is like one of the only times I've ever experienced being able to like w- enjoy a show while watching it and also thinking about the technical side of things. Oh yeah. And like not ever focusing on one side too much. Yeah. I was like appreciating the hell out of it, but also like so engrossed in the world. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wow, this shot is so beautiful, but also the scene is just great because the shot was set up so perfectly. Yeah, that's why. That's why. That's why it's series magic. It's like this is all that you want to see. Yeah, great storytelling, storytelling through the writing and the visuals and the acting, uh, and talk about something that that elevated a movie, a show that elevated a movie, and now makes you can makes you like are you now you're like you can't wait till the Batman two. Like I almost and what'll be next? I almost feel like the Batman, like I wouldn't be as excited for the Batman two if the Penguin didn't exist. Yeah. Which is crazy for me to even hear myself say, because like, before this came out, I would have been like, nah, I don't need the Penguin. I could watch the Batman Part 2, but now it's the yeah. complete opposite. Now it's like, yep, I would agree. Yeah. It's like, it it uh, helps elevate the whole series, the whole story. Um, and that's what a show, I think, I think what a show is great at. I, yeah. I honestly would rather, I would love, well, I say that lightly because you don't want to have multiple seasons, but I would love like a series or movies that then you have spinoffs mm-hmm. kind of already had that obviously with star wars something like that but not done to its perfection yeah. if this is the start of many banger shows in between this and the batman part two or um the bat in between batman the batman part two and part three mm-hmm. and we're gonna have some cool shows i would love that how about an how about an awesome arkham series that's like American Horror Story, or or the Arkham Asylum comic book that I had you re, uh, read with me, mm-hmm. um, which was awesome. It's the uh, I think it was Arkham Asylum, a serious place, and a serious mind, or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, it was amazing. Uh, you could do something cool like that. Have Hugo Strange be the main character, yeah, and a couple other char- main characters, and of course your Rogues Gallery that's already there. Probably will lean more towards in between Batman Two and Batman Three. Um, but man, you could, yeah, there's so much, there's so much you can do. There's, yeah. Can you, I, I love that idea, but can you imagine if they brought Amadeus Arkham in there? I would love that. Like, I would absolutely love that. I would love it a was period. A, like a show. It's like, a pa- past and present. Yeah. You, have, do you don't, you don't, you don't have, so you do, you maybe take a little bit of inspiration from the, the Arkham Asylum comic book that Grant Morrison did, but you put it on his head where it's focusing more on Arkham itself mm-hmm. and then you have flashbacks with Amadeus Arkham and then you lead it all the way 
all up until Arkham Asylum is how it uh, how it is now. Almost do like I, a memento type. Uh, yeah, a like, little bit. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. Like, actually, yeah. That's yeah. crazy, but that kind could be of. cool. Yeah, I would agree. Because like, um, yeah, Amadeus's voice in the in the game is just very unsettling. Yeah, it's you. Like you uh, need to go yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's yeah. It's creepy. <laughs> uh, the the whole and his whole thing is tragic, but also creepy. Yeah, it's a great origin story for the you know the the from the guy that's named Arkham Asylum from Arkham Asylum. Yeah. Um. So yeah, just just the potential that we can get from after watching this series. It, that's why it's serious magic for me. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. It's, 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 it's not the only time we've agreed completely. Yeah. <laughs> but it's the only time I feel like we are literally in complete unison with no, how we yeah. feel about the show. No, it's like, yeah, I can't. Minus yeah. one, we both agreed, but we still had differing. we like, oh, I like this track better than that one. <laughs> You're wrong, because that's the Godzilla classic track. <laughs> like, yeah, but it's great for modern, for the modern age. It's, it's composed great. I don't know, it is. It's great. I just, you know, I, mean, I, mean, I, I, I don't I, know I, how many times I recommend that movie to anyone and everyone, by the way. But Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, yeah. like, I want to watch the movie again, like, oh, now. Yeah, but, dude, I, I got to watch it recently with my brother. It was yeah. the first time watching it. Man, it was awesome to have him, to see him watch that. And then I sh then he's like, dude, show me minus, show me a little bit of minus color. And I'm looking at him like... I must watch. This is my this is this is my next time. It will be minus color. Yeah. Has to be minus color, dude. I've already seen it four or five times already. Oh yeah. Um and now I'm ready to watch minus color. I think it's gonna amplify because I saw a couple scenes. Yeah. Oh the trailer doesn't do it justice. When you actually see it mm -hmm. from the film, oh it's beautiful. I actually kinda wish it was done in black and white. Even though I know oh, that wouldn't no, sit well, the, the, the movie is freaking beautiful. It, like, is, it, it is, it is beautiful. Incredible. It is beautiful. However, holy crap, it would have amplified it beyond belief. It would have been so clever mm. to have done that, because oh, it was born to be in black and white too. I mean, it fits completely with the uh, fifty. Was it fifty four? Fifty four. That's why. That's, that's why yeah. I would say it. Because like, well, this is like a rend uh, updated version. Like, how crazy is that? Yeah, like you could watch it as almost like a. I mean, like a pseudo sequel, or a real pseudo like a remake. Legacy sequel, yeah. Like a pseudo yeah, remake, yeah, remake. Yeah, um, yeah. That's probably. I mean, it's my favorite one, but it. I think if people don't have that one in like the top three to five Godzilla films, then there's something wrong. I would agree with you because like it has to be there. Oh, it then one hundred percent is with me. I, I got to do my ranking, but my my proper ranking. That's a video for. Have me. I even given you my ranking? Uh, I think you and Sam did, but fresh like memory. That could be a whole different video too. But like, I, I feel like I would know my top three at least. But John doesn't want to know that. I do. What the fuck? <laughs> you just kind of left me on red. <laughs> it was like the Snapchat. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Top three. Top three. Uh, number one, definitely Godzilla minus one. Number two would probably be um, Shin Godzilla. Wow. And then number three would be original. Wow. Yeah. Like, I think those three are the best for wow. sure. Like I, I could I could be fine with any of them being in any order for anyone. But I feel like those three have to be the top three. Okay. Out of what I've seen from Godzilla. And what have you seen? Quite a bit. I mean, I've seen 54, what? I've seen 84, I've seen um, Pialante. Oh, okay. You I've impressed me. I've seen you the me. Mechagodzilla one. Yes. Wow, I've you seen Mothra. Shit, you I've impre seen impressive. I've seen Godzilla vs. Kong, Godzilla vs. Kong V2, or Godzilla X Kong, the new empire, whatever. Hey. Um, Godzilla King 2014, of King of the Monsters. Yeah. Kong Skull Island. Kong Skull Island, Final Wars. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that's basically most of them. Yeah. And then Shin minus one. I think there's another one that I'm missing. No. But like. Oh, GMK. GMK. Yeah. Yeah. It was like Godzilla. Or, uh... Yeah. You know. Wait, no. The other M. Godzilla. Mothra. King Ghidorah. Battle Giant Monsters All Attack. Uh, someone that's like the game, right? Godzilla destroy all monsters. No, no. The, the most destroy all monsters is Final Wars. That type of Dude thing. Dude with the mustache. 
Yeah. 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 This dude has a mustache. That one's kind of a little bit poor, in my opinion. I I know you and Sam liked it. It's just because it's just, it's batshit crazy. And it, it, it goes into that realm of Godzilla films that were early, early, long ago that had that, like, mm-hmm. holy, this is batshit insane, which is, I didn't, I didn't show you guys all, I didn't show you guys those, but they're crazy. And I think that's what it's leaning towards, yeah. which is cool, which I can appreciate. Don't really think it should have been the last Godzilla film, in my opinion, <laughs> meaning, 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 like, you know, after 2004, that was supposed to be Godzilla's done. Mm. Um, wouldn't have been my first choice. Uh, to have that story, obviously. It's the Batman um, Robin of Godzilla movies. No, the Batman Robin of Godzilla movies is giant, is uh, all monsters attack, which is starring Godzilla's son. Was that baby Godzilla? Yeah. That's Barney, green Barney. <laughs> yeah. Freaking Chuck E. Cheese outfit. Oh, dude, that's freaking creepy. Dude's bouncing and vibing like no tomorrow. Dude, he looks like a pug. Yeah, he you know he looks like one of those Easter bunnies you used to get at church for those like. <laughs> You know those like overly sugared, like candies that you bite into. It feels like you're biting into a freaking mattress. <laughs> yep. You're just like, what is this? I kind of would like this, but I don't at the oh, same time. That's yeah, that's what Baby Godzilla looks like. That's gross. Anyways, yeah. that's a great segment you can put as a separate thing, dude. About minus one, bring it back. Bring it, bring back minus one. Yeah, no minus minus one. one. It's like yeah. why you you know to be watched. minus one. Yeah. Did you see that? Uh, Watch minus one with your plus one. Did you? True, or you could be like, because it was it was Godzilla. I didn't get to text you guys. What? It was Godzilla Day last Sunday. What? I feel like I, I've always seen that pop up for the past few years. And I didn't see it this year. No, but this is proper. It's it, it's it, it 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 yeah. It, it felt it felt almost kind of obscure this time for some reason. But that's probably because it's not been a Godzilla movie that's come out yet. You see but... minus. No, it's not minus two. But they're they're the, the same director is working on a new Godzilla movie. Uh, the same one from minus one mm-hmm. he is it's um not like a sequel or anything which i'm fine with but like yeah also kind of what i feel like godzilla minus one had a good setup for a sequel it did but i, I don't know I, I think just because that's a period piece and whatnot i think that lends towards the pseudo realism joker one joker two situation <laughs> you don't it's not needed stop please <laughs> if you make this you're gonna ruin minus one <laughs> It won the awards. Don't well, wreck I mean, it. hey, I mean, what's hey? They, they, I mean, I think they could kill another, uh, you know, different, different story. But do it. I would love, love to see that. Just don't do it. Don't do it with minus one, if anything. Yeah. But yeah, I'm telling you, that's a great episode right there. That'd be like six minutes, right? Probably. And it's just, just because of Godzilla's anniversary. Yeah. That's so true. granted, it was like two weeks ago. That sucks. Yeah, I know. I should, but, I should have done something. Well, I mean, I did, but it was a while ago. To oh, yeah. that one. Gojira. Mm, which was for the anniversary. Was that last Godzilla? year? Yeah. Holy sh- Holy crap. Dude. Dude, I just have... <laughs> I just had, like, a meltdown. <laughs> we are freaking old. <laughs> I am not. We yeah, are I am old as dirt, bro. Old as dirt. I am young as... I'm in my prime. I'm young as freaking cake flour dude like what are you talking about cake flour <laughs> cake flour <laughs> what does that mean okay so now we're going to go into just listing some of the people that we want to thank so much for having this wonderful yes, show presented absolutely. to our beautiful eyes i said that wrong but yep by the way i haven't been able to watch uh the Wait, final what? reckonings trailer because i haven't seen dead reckoning you know the Mission Impossible 8 trailer came oh, out today? Oh, yes, yes. Which is funny. I haven't it's seen called that either. The Final Reckoning, but then it's literally ingrained in stone that the last one was called Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. But now <laughs> the last one's called Mission Impossible The Final Reckoning, so there's no Part 2. <laughs> no, it is, but they, but they think it's clever to have the final instead of Part 2. Yeah, but why? Now Part 1's just hanging out. It's got blue ball syndrome. <laughs> it's, <good. laughs> it's like That's being OCD. It is, but like... It is, 100%. If you're still going to have Reckoning in the title, why not just say Dead Reckoning Part 2 like it originally was? Is because Dead Reckoning Part 1 performed so bad because Fallout came out beforehand and it was peak? <laughs> I mean, yeah, maybe. I haven't even seen the movie. I need to. I haven't seen it, but I've heard very mixed reviews and I feel like I'm going to love it. 
and I feel like you are probably going to love it based on what I've heard. Like, oh, if you like this type of thing, then you'll love it. It's like, okay, well, it's right on my alley, mm. Jorge. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? Yeah, what the, what the heck are you talking about, Jorge? You yeah. can't just say that and think that, like, I'm going to understand that crap. Like, what the... So we have 128 people in the cast. Actually, no. It's, it's, 128? It's We're not talking about 128. If you touch my foot one more time. No. <laughs> so, here we have... So, okay. So, if you guys oh, don't... No, dude, you can't fucking say that to me. If you think if, I'm going to go, like, all natural? If you guys... Uh, <laughs> if you guys don't know uh, by now, after, like, what, the 67th episode of Cinema 3D, me and John are in the video world. Shocker. I dabble in writing and john dabbles in set design <laughs> that is the biggest lie of my of your life no i'm a editor shooter and john's a shooter editor <laughs> well, that's that's freaking messed up An aspiring director <laughs> no john's a director dp then editor i'm an editor slash gopher <laughs> slash gopher <laughs> he meant to say gaffer, but gopher sounds cooler. <laughs> no, we're, does, we both we both do a little bit of everything, which is partly why we run ourselves dry when we're on set. But um, <laughs> yeah, so we do know what it is like to be behind the scenes of some smaller stuff. Never had to work on something this big, but hopefully one day we can. Um, cast and crew: Craig Zobel directed three episodes, which I've heard his name being thrown around. And then uh, we had Kevin Bray direct two episodes and Helen Shaver, who actually directed the episode four. Yeah. Which is great. Um, obviously, cast, your main cast, you have Colin Farrell as Oz. You have Kristen Milioti as Sofia Falcone. Renzi Feliz as Victor Aguilar. All three so far great performances. Deidre mm. O'Connell as Frances Cobb, which is also mm. a great performance. I heard someone say that she should win as the Best Supporting Actress. I could see that. Uh... Theo Rossi as Dr. Julian Rush, which is, he was creeped me out. He was yeah. her doctor and yep. then became her friend, but also oh, yeah. like he seemed like he had the hots for her. Yep. So he was very submissive and weird and, mm -hmm. and like, what? Interesting. Absolutely. You need to be an Arkham. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> Clancy Brown, the goat. Yep. Uh, he's played every DC character. He's done everything. Um, Michael Kelly as Johnny VD. He was great. I'm just going based off whoever I know, but like, Literally everyone in this show was cast perfectly. Michael Zegan is Alberto Falcone. I feel like he pulled off the whole like I'm oh my dad was Carmine, like I'm I'm the guy. The hot but shit. like yeah, yeah. He was gone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I, I was just like, I'm not having this stuff, man, especially after he 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 laughed at him. And that's what got him to like Yeah. Pretty much, plus a cap his ass. Dude, run, and, run, 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 the falling, yeah. That's what I was thinking of. <laughs> Not my trunk. <laughs> um, the writer. Yes. Oh yeah, it's a Bill Finger, Bob Kane, Lauren LaFranc is really the actual writer. She has gained so much respect for me. Yeah. Um, wow, that's insane. I did not know that. I've never really looked up what she's worked on beforehand until now, and I found out just now that she wrote a lot of agents of shield which i love wow and she wrote chuck oh wow which Damn. is griffin's favorite show of all time which means griffin you have to watch the big one yeah and which yeah. is one of my favorite shows Damn, ever made son, that's a resume like that's like so many yeah i've heard i've heard a lot about her i just didn't know what she worked on but she's incredible i listened to her on every single episode and she just knows exactly what she wanted Many conversations with Matt Reeves, like just very smart human being mm -hmm. and knows how to write a story and put in her own quirks that she wants. Like one of her big things was she's, I guess, got some his Hispanic or Latino background. And she was like, I really wanted to have that in the show, which is Victor. Mm -hmm. He's like, I really thought it was it was cool to have him have a speech impediment, which is yeah, like I hits so. that Great. whole side of things, but also it's a Hispanic. Then you have the Asians the Asian characters with Zhao and you have like the Italians and like there's so, it's just a perfect mesh of every like all diversity without yeah. feeling like it's forced yeah I would agree like I'd it agree. just works like it's, it's crazy um 
cinematographer. There's a, there's a few of them like Darren Tiernan, David Franco, mm -hmm. James Franco's brother, <laughs> Jonathan Freeman, Zoe White. They did a great job at oh, making yeah. it feel like the Batman. I agree. Um, I agree. Editors. I mean, there, there's so many people that I would love to name, but it would just take up so much time. But like all these people, we, he just did an incredible job. It's crazy. Like, I, I can't imagine, I don't know what it would feel like to be a part of something this big, to have all that pressure and then to try and make it land and then mm -hmm. to f eventually see overwhelming positive reviews. Yeah. That's been like, hugely positive. Hugely that's praised. gotta be such a great feeling. feeling. Oh yeah. To know that your show was like now going to be cemented in history as one of the best DC like pieces ever created. And rightfully so. And it did kind of go through production hell as a lot of people, yeah, a lot yeah. of stuff has been happening with the strike and stuff. And this mm -hmm. one came out successful. I think so. Um, yeah. So thank you to all of them. Yes. I know there's a lot more we could talk about with the show. Maybe we'll talk about it more in the future, especially mm -hmm. if Sam sees it, then we're definitely going to be talking about it even more yeah. leading up to the Batman part two. Um, what's the other thing? My last thing was I wanted to do a random thing about shows versus movies this year mm -hmm. because there is a plethora of content that I've watched this year, but not really movies. <laughs> yeah. Shocker. <laughs> Which is a shocker. I know, but you have, um, damn, I didn't get to add these freaking things to my queue, which sucks, but I will sort it by series and release date because yes. Um, yeah, you have like, what you got the Dune part twos, you got the alien Romuluses, you got the inside out twos that's, yeah. that's basically everything i've seen this year that i actually thought was amazing Jeez. um i mean kingdom of the planet of the apes was good beekeeper was good then you got rebel moon code 8 part 2 under paris which was eh, godzilla kong which is kind of eh. um haven't seen deadpool wolverine but other than that there's not much that might impress me besides long legs mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah but then you go into shows yes you have the acolyte which was absolute bad i'm saying bad in a manner that does not mean good thank the lord i haven't watched it yeah you lucky um then you got uh sugar which is also with colin farrell which i thought was really good hmm. and that's my second least favorite show of the year you have monarch which was monarch was great incredible yep monarch um, was great. for all mankind space show i've told you it's one of the best space things i've ever seen you have cape crusader Oh sure, <laughs> kind of peak. Yeah, have a lot. Uh, yeah. Supercell is a is a British, uh, British African no British black led show, which is like the boys, but like from England, and it's really cool. Manhunt, <laughs> which is a retelling of Abraham Lincoln, incredible. Oh. Reacher, with hopefully our new Batman. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. The ones who live, Rick Grimes coming back. How can you beat that? The Boys season four. How can you beat that? Oh, Fallout. That, how can you beat that? Terminator that Zero. How Terminator can you beat Zero. that? Dark Matter. One of the best things since Inception. Wow. Um, and then the Penguin comes out. And then also, Outer Banks happens season four, which I had no clue that it was even that good until my wife showed me. And we binged all four seasons in the last two weeks. And it's absolutely incredible. I cried in season four finale, and I'm really hoping season five comes out in a quicker manner than Stranger Things Season 5 because the show is absolutely so good. It's a national treasure mixed with Indiana Jones. Oh, it, wow. it has me by the heart. Shoot. And uh, Silo's coming out next week. Super stoked for that. Rebecca Ferguson. Um, you just had to make this into a show thing. Dude, it's because shows are so freaking good. It's ridiculous. Daryl yeah. Dixon Season 2 came out. Dear and it's incredible like i mean come on what do you do what, 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 the, what else is there that i'm missing <laughs> i don't even know bro dune prophecy comes out like next week or two yeah. weeks from now that's gonna be great i think i don't know but like it's ridiculous how i mean maybe i'm in the minority but shows especially this year have been so much better than movies this year 
I mean, the only movie that I would say could compete with a lot of these shows is Alien Romulus, but it's not it's not touching the Penguin. It's not touching Terminator Zero. It's not touching Dark Matter. Um, yeah, like I don't know. Have we finally reached the point where shows are better than movies? Whoa, this dude's getting bold right now. Let's just let's hold the horses until that's ready, okay? I mean, that's the question I want you to answer. No, I, I we have to we have to dissect that after, you know, the so-called former years or year maybe. Let's see. But no, uh, the, the, we I mean, that's okay. a whole other episode. Let's, let's analyze this really quick. Monarch. It's one of the best things from the Godzilla franchise, right? Yeah. Yeah. This show. Yeah. Um, yeah. Penguin. Yeah. It's one of the best things from Batman franchise as a whole. Yeah. The Boys. It's one of the best things we've ever seen superhero related. Yeah. Yeah. Terminator Zero. Arguably the best thing from the franchise. Wait a minute. Uh, I mean, kind arguably, of, maybe. Terminator maybe. One's better, but arguably it's yeah. the second best. Whoa, that's a hot take. <laughs> that's yeah. my opinion. I think yeah. It's the second best. Yeah. I think it's T1, T0, T2. Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, it's T101. No, that's 102. <laughs> it's T102. <laughs> I got You're you. You're the verge of Queen Jason. <laughs> Um, I mean, I don't know. With those four or five explanations, I mean, like, yeah, I think that says it kind of that shows whether or not you believe shows are better than movies. I think shows have finally matched movies to be in that conversation. Yeah. And uh, when I have Dune Part 2 at my number five of the year, that kind of says everything because Dune Part 2 is highly regarded. Yeah. But then you have four things that are better. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> anyway, all in all. The Penguin uh, is one of the best things I have witnessed in my entire life. I would agree. One of the best written shows visually on par with the movie that it spun off, it's spun off from. Um, two of the greatest performances I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just got so much going for it on being a DC project as well, knowing that I love Colin Farrell and knowing I love this world. And it just, it was like a match made in heaven for that show to be created at my age and at your age and what we know and love. And, uh, yeah, I would highly recommend anyone and literally, literally anyone to mm -hmm. watch this. Cause like if you, whatever you like, I feel like there's, it's very hard for people not to like this show unless yeah. you just don't like cussing or you don't like blood. Like if you don't like that, don't watch it. But yeah, like, I agree. if you fine with it, then if you fine with it, then watch it, please. <laughs> because like the show deserves everything. I mean, it's gotten some of the highest ratings, some of the highest viewership that any DC show has ever gotten and mm -hmm. it deserves it for sure. So I would agree. I'm super excited for the Batman part two. I super am too. excited we got to talk about this. Yes, absolutely. Even yes. though it's probably two hours and 37 minutes long. Probably. But guys, I highly recommend it. It is the show that is of the talk right now. Mm. And I would highly recommend you uh, giving it a watch. And let's see if by episode one, you're not hooked already. No, you will. And, uh, you know, dro drop some comments in the uh, comment section. Let's have a discussion mm -hmm. um, about this show. It needs to be talked more about. Yep. Um, so Penguin's uh, goaded. Penguin is goaded. The Batman is goaded. The Batman. wake that was put in on this show yeah. made it worth it. Yep, nice. <laughs> that was great. And with that, guys, we will see you in the next podcast.